Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing this makeup look right here using some of my favorite products from 2017. And I'm not just going to give you a makeup look um, with my favorite, using my favorite products from 2017. I'm also going to give you my top five products from each category. So we're talking brows. We're talking lashes, we're talking mascara, eyeshadow, highlight, primers, foundation, a liquid illuminators, contour, bronzer, blush, lips, every category you can think of, I got you covered for you. So if you want to see how I created this look featuring my favorite products from 2017 with my top five from each category, then please Keep watching. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna start off now since my face is clean with moisturizer, and I do have five. Um, my top five moisturizers from 2017. That first one I'm gonna mention, and the one that I'm going to be using is the Clinique Dramatically Different Gel Moisturizing Gel. This stuff is my baby. Um, I love this stuff. Love it, love it, love it. If you've been following me on my channel for a while, you know how much I love, love, love. This, stuff. this one is the Gold Bond Ultimate Skin Therapy Cream. Love it. it is non-greasy and it has a fresh scent. It's not overpowering scent. It's a really nice, pleasant scent. And like the bottle says, it is non-greasy. And I think that is one of my favorite things about this particular moisturizer because it does not leave your skin greasy. I, I use this on my face. I use it on my neck, my chest, my elbows, my knees, my feet, my hands. I freaking love this stuff. Another product, another moisturizing product that I loved in 2017 and I still do, right, in, in 2018, I still love this product. This is the Garnier Skin Active um, Ultra Miracle Sleeping Cream. I know you're supposed to wear this crap at night, but I also like to wear it during the daytime. I really love how my skin looks after applying this stuff. When you do use it like recommended, which is at bedtime, when you wake up in the morning, it's like whole new skin. And last, is it last? No, not last. I have two more to go. So another product that I've been really loving in 2017. This is more towards the end of 2017, but still it's an amazing product. This is my Glow On Hydra Base um, from It's Tooth House. This is a Korean brand product, and I love the way my skin looks and feels after I apply this product. So yeah, I have been using it every day, non-stop since I've gotten it, or not every day, every time I apply makeup, non-stop since I've gotten it. And last but not least, because there are a lot of other moisturizers that I love throughout 2017, but these are the ones that I gravitated towards most. And the last product I'm going to show you guys in the moisturizing category is the Vitamin E Oil. Um, this is from Matrix Bounty. and. When I'm in a rush and I don't have time to do my morning skincare routine, I just throw this on in the morning and call it a day. It leaves my skin moisturized throughout the whole entire day and I love applying this both morning and night or anytime I feel like I need it. You need a little vitamin E in your life, alright? Okay. That completes the moisturizing section. Let's get back to the video. I said that I was going to go in with my Clinique Dramatically um, Different Gel, but I'm actually going to go in with the Glow On Hydra Base from F2 House because honestly I've been gravitating towards this more often. On to primers and I've tried a lot of primers out in 2017 but there are five, five particular ones that I absolutely enjoyed, loved, everything about them, and I gravitated towards these particular ones more often throughout 2017. These are my top five. Starting with the Urban Decay Urban Defense Complexion Primer. Um, I remember the first time I tried this primer and I was blown the freaks away. But I use it on the days where I want to be beat to every god known to every culture. Um, I want to be beat to the sun, moon, and stars, and back. Um, and I want my makeup to last throughout all of that, you know? This stuff right here, I absolutely love, 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 love. Next, I'm going to talk about the Too Faced Hangover RX. I think I used it on every makeup tutorial that I did, every makeup look that I did, you know, off camera. 
this stuff right here leaves your skin so hydrated, so nice, so soft. I don't really know if it what makes the foundation longevity longer or better or if it improves the way makeup looks. I just like the fact that it keeps my skin hydrated and when I'm using that foundation, I don't look cakey or dry or anything when I'm using this particular primer. Next, I'm going to be talking about drugstore product, drugstore primers. The first one is the NYX Angel Veil Primer and this particular primer is my baby. I love this primer. Um, I got it because, oh my god, I forgot who, who it was that I watched on YouTube that used this primer a lot and I wanted to try it for myself and I absolutely love, oh, what is her name? I, I see her face in my mind but I can't think of her name off the top of my head. But she used this primer a lot so I went out and got it, tried it, loved it and it's absolutely amazing. Then my holy, holy, holy grail primers. I use these two together because they both do two magically different things. So the first one is the NYX Honey Do Me Up. I love this stuff. When I want foundation to adhere to the skin and don't go nowhere, this is the primer that I use. This baby right here. Anyways, I really, really, really love this stuff. This is my go-to. This is my ride or die. This is my everything right here. And then in combination with that, I use the L'Oreal Magic Perfecting Base. And I like to use this just in the T-zone to fill in my pores. Um, my pores have actually been looking amazing lately, so I don't use it as much as I used to. But when I'm using this product, I need to use this one together because these two together are like... The perfect primer it literally this one is sticky allows foundation to just grab onto it and it also leaves your skin very hydrated and luminous looking and then this one just fills in the lines and the pores and just gives you a smooth all-around base these two are the ones I'll be using today on to foundation and for foundation I have my top five that I love in 2017 there are many others that I tried in 2017 but these are the ones that really just kept me coming back for more and we're gonna start off with my drugstore options first I have three drugstores and two high ends the first one I'm gonna talk about is the Neutrogena healthy oh excuse me. that was so rude my Neutrogena healthy skin liquid makeup um, I absolutely love this foundation. I love the way it makes my skin look very beautiful, very supple, like I've just drunk a bunch of water. Like if you're a girl who suffers from dry skin, a lot of my top in 2017 are probably your cup of tea because these are hydrating types foundations and primers and all everything else. Um, I love anything that hydrates my skin. I love anything that moisturizes my skin and I love a dewy finish. You guys know me for a while, you know I love dewy finishes. Next, I'm going to be talking about the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. This uh, this came out last year, yes. And ever since it came out, um, I, it won me over. This stuff right here, ugh, bomb. Oh my gosh. How it makes the skin look is amazing, flawless, everything about it, I freaking love it. And the fact that it's also good for the skin, I mean, come on now, for people who wear makeup every day, I'm not one of those people, but people who do, they, they can benefit from foundations like this, and like foundations like the Neutrogena one as well. And also, let me just mention that Neutrogena expanded their color range, but they always had the darker colors, you just couldn't buy them in stores, if that makes sense now you're able to actually walk into a store and pick your shed foundation. They stop at Coco. This is the, oh, I, I should have gave y'all the names. Of, <laughs> let me do that. Um, the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Liquid Makeup is in the color Chestnut. I said Coco, but it's in the color Chestnut. Chestnut is their darkest shade, by the way. The color that I got in CoverGirl Vitalist El Healthy Elixir is the color 775, which is Soft Sable, and again, this is the darkest shade. And this has always been the darkest shade in CoverGirl's foundation. Now moving on to my favorite drugstore foundation of all of 2017. I want to say these came out in 2016. But I was wearing like 
Nobody's Business in 2017, and that is the mix. Total Control Drop Foundation. This stuff changed my foundation life. Okay, um, I don't know what magical spell they have in this jar, but it's freaking amazing. And people stop the buzz around this product. Stop, you know, buzzing. I don't understand why, because this is still one of the best foundations that have came out within the last year or two. This stuff right here is amazing, and this is the foundation that I'm going to be going in with today. But moving on to my high-end drugstore foundation, anyways, we're going to go in with the Too Faced Born This Way Undetectable Medium to Full Coverage Foundation. I love this foundation. I mean, I am so happy they are working with Jackie Aina to expand the color range for us brown skin we come in all shades of brown and I am so happy that they are working on their color range um, especially in the dark shades um, I have two of the shades I have mahogany which is the first one I got in their second lunch and it is orange okay I don't have an orange undertone I don't have a yellow undertone I'm very neutral in my tone um, I can go with a, a warm undertone or I can go with a yellow or gold or yellow orange if it's like a light orange but if it's like pow orange in your face red I can't pull that off man it's just too much anyways so recently I picked up the color hazelnut and um I really love this shade on me I could go a shade lighter but they don't have that perfect shade for me just yet it's either too light or it's too orange or too yellow or too something um so far this is the close as I can get to my foundation shade or and again this is the color hazelnut this foundation is everything y'all now my favorite all-time foundation of, of everything is the NARS sheer glow foundation saving the best maybe sort of kind of the last my best foundation of, of life is this foundation and why I say it's controversial is because recently if you guys don't know already NARS is no longer considered a cruelty free um, makeup brand. They are technically still cruelty free in the United States, but they are not cruelty free in China. China, I believe that's China, right? China? Let me check my facts. And if, I, if I'm incorrect, I'll leave it in the description box. But as far as I know, um, China does test their makeup products on animals, they do a lot of test animals. And NARS decided to uh, have allowed us to sell their product in China. And if they're selling product in China, they have to be subject to China's guidelines. And part of those guidelines are to test their product on animals. So in China, NARS is not cruelty free. But as far as I know, it's still cruelty free here in America. I just, you know, it's just very controversial because a lot of people who are strong with cruelty free products won't even touch it even though it's not tested on animals here in America. Um, I can understand that and I am all, I, I don't like harm being done to any animal. I love animals. Will I promote NARS on my channel from this day forward? I don't know. But for now, we're just going to put this one to the back and let's head over and finish this bang. Okay, now we're moving on to the brows. In the brow category, this one's a little bit tough because you have brow pencils, you have brow gels, you have a, a gel, brow gel pots. I mean, you have them all, but my favorite form of brow product is pencil and powder. And then pencil and powder being top and then gel, the brow gel that you brush through being third. And I have like a slew of mixture of those. Um, top 
pop so I have them in their own category I do have some brown products that you that come in the pot like like the Anastasia dip brow I don't per se have that particular brand but I do have ColourPop's version of that brand of the dip pot or dip brows or whatever but I don't use them at all really it's just much easier for me to pull out a pencil now my all-time favorite brow pencil is by elf they have this new brow pencil. It comes in this really skinny, I believe it's a black two. It's really, it's, it's skinny like this. It comes in a black, uh, the packaging is black, and it's a really skinny, fine pencil. I love that brow pencil. It's the perfect shade for my blonde hair. And oh my gosh, I took it to work one day, and I can't freaking find it. I don't know where it is. So I'm stuck without my most favorite brow product of 2017. So I'm going in with my second favorite brow product of 2017 and that will be my ColourPop um, brow pencil and this one is in the color Bangin' Brunette. I know I'm not a brunette but this shade is perfect for my blonde hair. Um, I love this pencil. It's my second favorite. My second. Not my favorite favorite. I can't find this but it's my second. Then third. And I only have three brow pencils in this category, um, unfortunately. I don't really venture out that much when it comes to brow products. I kind of stick with what I like. But I did get this a while ago in a BoxyCharm box. And ever since then, I was like, oh my god, this brow pencil is bomb-tastic. And that is the Winky Lux brow pencil. And um, I don't actually, I think this is a universal brow pencil. It's, it's good. I like it. I, I, I like it. I don't love it, but I like it and it is one of the pencils that I did gravitate towards a lot in 2017. And that completes the pencil part. Then we got the brow gel formula stuff. Whoa. Okay, I'm getting a little crazy. A little crazy. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. Okay, so I think I have five products in this category. Yes, I do. And these are all drugstore products. I think. Yes. Yes, they are all drugstore products. And we're going to start off with my Holy Grail, Bride of Die, Tried and True. This is the Elf Treat and Tame Eyebrow Gel stuff. On this side is the Treat and this side is the Tame. I love this product. Why? Because this thing right here, this clear stuff right here, this stuff right here, grows your brows. I don't know what's in it. I don't know how. But every time, I swear I have to reshape my brows every time other week if not every week when I'm using this product it's crazy it's crazy guys I don't know what's in it but it's good um a new uh favorite of mine this product right here is my is it has easily became my top full grow product and this is the elf uh brow gel in the color medium I freaking love this wand this wand is ridiculous and oh my gosh it grabs every last hair you have and just sets it and puts it in place it feels in real nice I just, I just love this thing and then next I have the NYX tinted brow mascara and this is in the color chocolate another one that I really like a lot this is I like to use this when I've gone a little too ham on my brows and they start looking like Chewbacca I go in and I kind of lighten it up a little bit with this guy and then when I was a brunette not a brunette when I was a redhead these two were my favorite go-to brow products the first one is the Maybelline Brow Drama, and this one is in the color Auburn, and it looks like this. And then the last one is the Rimmel Brow This Way Brow Styling Gel, and this one is in the color Medium Brown, and it looks like this. I love it, love it to fill in my brows when I'm lazy and don't feel like actually using a pencil. But yeah, that completes my top brow products 2015, 20, oh, I'm about to say 2015, Lord, how are we going way back in time, 2017. All right, that's good. So we made it all the way this far. I have on my e.l.f. 
to um, eyeshadow base. There is no top five because e.l.f. is the only eyeshadow base that I ever use. It is my holy grail. It is my favorite. If it ain't broke, why well, fix it? I'm not going out looking for new eyeshadow primers. I don't care to try new eyeshadow primers. I have what works for me. But this part is not what this part is for. I got all the way here to this point. Realizing I didn't go in with an illuminating base. And I have my top five right here. But I really like to apply a all over illuminating base before I put on my makeup. And I totally, totally forgot this part. But I'm still going to come in and show you what my top five illuminating base for 2017 was. And we're going to start off with my Holy Grail product. And it's probably the product that I'm going to use as a highlighter, a liquid highlighter before I apply my powder highlighter. And that is the Becca. Oh, should I tell you? This is the only uh, high-end product, illuminating base product that I have. And this is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the color Opal. And then, um, if I'm going for drugstore options, I have four of them. And, um... The first one is the NYX Born to Go Liquid Illuminating Base, or Illuminator, it's not a base, it's just an illuminator, but I use it as a base. Um, and this is the color Sun Goddess. I absolutely love this um, product. It just, uh, on women of color, it just looks so good. We look sun kissed on me. Oh my god. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Next, I have the Maybelline Master Strobing Liquid, and this is the color Medium. Also, really, really, really really love this product in. And then the last two that I absolutely love, one of them I've used since 2016. This is the Maybelline Dream Bronze BB 8-in-1 Beauty Balm Sun Kiss Glow Perfector. And this has sunscreen in it. Sunscreen, it has a, a sunscreen of SPF 25. This was my Holy Grail product all of 2016. I loved it all of 2017. This product I love to use when I'm not wearing makeup. So when I'm doing like a makeup, no makeup, or for real, for real, no makeup, this is what I like to apply because it gives my color, my color, my skin a little color. It evens out my skin tone because of the tone of this product. And then it leaves it with this beautiful illuminescent glow. I just, illuminescent? Illuminating glow. I just love it. It's beautiful to wear underneath makeup or um, alone. I absolutely love it. And then my last um, product I'm going to show is the e.l.f. Natural Glow Lotion. This oh stuff, gosh, it's so pretty. It is so pretty. This it just, ugh, it, my camera's not picking it up, but that, that, this is the true lit from within glow because there's no trace of anything. It just looks like my skin is just healthy. Yeah. Anyways, those are my top five liquid illuminators of 2017. Let's get back into the face. Okay, so we have come around to the part of the video that was the toughest for me to decide because so many eyeshadow palettes came out in 2017 and we're going to start with the one that I actually bought in 2016 but I didn't get a chance to use until 2017 and I, it just I, I, I totally understand the hype around this palette and why it is one of the most popular of the palettes that Anastasia Beverly Hills ever came out with and that is the Modern Renaissance Palette. This palette right here, I haven't even used the brush. It's still wrapped up in the plastic. <laughs> Get out of here. Oh, this looks like a good brush to use. Just let me put that right there. Anyway, this is what the palette looks like in case you guys don't know already. This palette is literally bomb.com. I will be using this palette in a look today because I am really wanting to use some of these more rosier, pinkier tones. Maybe gray in a bit of a B-Day look since it's getting close to that time already. And my second favorite palette of 2017. And you guys are probably going to be like, what? Uh, but y'all don't understand. I ain't everybody. I don't know what the hell was wrong with everybody when this palette came out and why everybody and their mama hated this palette. But it's like, you know, you ask for a pigmented palette and you get a pigmented palette and then you complain about the palette being too pigmented. I mean... Ways. The palette that I'm talking about is the most hated palette of 2017, but it happens to be my most loved palette of 2017, and that is Subculture by Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is by far one of my favorite palettes that came out last year. My favorite 
palette that came out last year. I used it non-stop since I got it, since it came out. I went out and bought this palette after watching maybe 30 reviews on how bad this palette was. Everybody in the mama was talking about how bad this palette was. Oh my god, the pigment. It's hard to work with it. They don't move. They this and they that. And it's like, you give the person what they ask for and they still find reasons to complain. I don't understand. I still went out and bought this palette and bought it with my own money because you know I ain't that type of YouTuber yet to be getting stuff on PR so you know I had to spend my own dollars to get this palette but let me tell you it was dollars well spent because this is a palette that is well loved unlike my modern renaissance palette I really use the hell out of this palette <laughs> and my favorite colors in this palette are the ones that people complain about the most which is so hilarious is the greens I love all the greens in this look moving on now we're going to a palette that I created myself. I'm just spitting everywhere. And this palette is made up of all ColourPop eyeshadows. Not all of them, but the ones that I purchased. And I think this is a 28 eyeshadow palette thingy. This palette thingy came from Coastal Sense. As you can see, it still has the Coastal Sense stuff on it. But inside of it is not Coastal Sense eyeshadows. These are the ColourPop eyeshadows. And these are all the ones that I own so far. And I absolutely love ColourPop's eyeshadows. I love the formula. And you know what's so crazy? The formula of ColourPop eyeshadow um, pots remind me so much of Subculture. And Subculture's eyeshadows remind me so much of ColourPop's eyeshadows. They are highly pigmented eyeshadows. And they just, as soon as you put them on, they pack pigment. On top of that, a lot of these eyeshadow colors look to be maybe lighter in the pan than they are when you actually put them on your eyes they're a totally different color which is a lot of the complaints that people had about the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette which makes no sense to me because a lot of those people complain about the palette and love the ColourPop palette or eyeshadows but they pretty much are the same in my opinion moving on my fourth most loved palette of 2017 and I never thought I would say this because I have never owned anything by this woman, any of her lunches. Um, I actually recently got her highlighter, but I got that only because it was in a boxy charm box. Um, I have never seen one video by this woman, um, but so many people talk about her. They know of her. I mean, she's huge. But I had never seen one video and didn't know who she was until she came out with the highlighters and the person that I'm talking about is Jaclyn Hill and the palette I'm talking about is the Jaclyn Hill palette by Morphe oh my gosh or from Morphe it's Jaclyn Hill palette with Morphe love this palette but this palette is a game changer it is a life this and last but surely surely not least is my Tartlet in Bloom palette. I love this palette, guys. I love it so much. Or maybe I'll be using this one. I don't know. It's been hard to choose. It's been a hard blow to choose. But I, I absolutely, this is like my color palette. I love, love, love cool, neutral, taupey tone colors on my skin tone. Oh my gosh. Oh, excuse me. I, I love this palette. I, and I have been wanting this palette for years. And I was finally able to get it last year. And I'm so happy I have this palette in my collection. It is freaking gorge. That is it for my top favorite eyeshadow palettes of 2017. So if you guys want to see what I'm about to create on this eye space, then please keep watching.
to do my top wing liner, but not before I tell you what my, my top four liquid eyeliners were for the year of 2017. I'm just going to start with the Holy Grail, the one that um, got discontinued and has a lot of people like me in an uproar because I'm saying NYC, why let a good thing get discontinued? You can purchase this eyeliner on Amazon, but it costs a lot of money and it takes forever to get to you. OMG. But I do have backups because this is holy grail, this is baby, this is the bomb of all liners. And this is the NYC liquid liner. I know it doesn't say it on the package because I have worn it off. But this is the NYC holy grail mecca of all liquid liners. We're talking about the Kat Von D tattoo liner. And I actually really like this. I got this in the Ipsy bag in 2016 because that's the last time I did Ipsy. I, I, Ipsy. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that's the last time I ever did Ipsy was in 2016 and I did not start using this liner because I didn't really start using any of the products in my Ipsy bags until last year because I was like I got tons and tons of these freaking bags laying around with product in it that I've never tried. So yeah, here we go. And I pulled this out of one of the bags and I absolutely love this eyeliner. I would actually buy this liquid liner in full size once I'm done with the travel of course. Moving on to one of my other very loved um, felt tip applicator eyeliners and that is the L'Oreal Paris 12 hour infallible the super slim liquid eyeliner. This bed boy is awesome. And lastly I have the Elf Precision liquid eyeliner. This is a brush applicator eyeliner. Um, it's good but it's no NYC. What I like about this particular eyeliner is that if I want to get a very thin, thin wing. This is my go. It is wonderful for super thin, barely there, but there wing eyeliner. But yeah, those are my top four for 2017. Let's go ahead and move these eyes. Okay, bam. So now we are at the part of the video where we're going to be talking about mascaras. And I guess I should go ahead and include lashes. You know, because your girl been wearing lashes lately. Like, <laughs> y'all remember when I never wore lashes in any of my videos? Like, I never wore lashes, period. Like, y'all remember that time? Like, if y'all been following me since way, way back. I don't know. Way back. When I was living in St. Louis, back. Back. Anyways. Y'all know I didn't never wear no lashes. <laughs> I still don't wear them. I wear them now, but not like everybody else does. Like some people can't live without the lashes. I wear them for certain looks. Certain looks, lashes are required. But I still believe in rocking my own lashes and I still rock two to three mascaras on my natural lashes. But um, these look needs lashes, okay? So we're going to talk about my top 5 mascaras and then we'll move on to my top 5 lashes of 2017. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get these two right here out the way. These are my holy grail mascara. These two mascaras are my holy grail mascara. mascaras, okay? Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I remember when I first tried this mascara, I did not like it. I did not. I was like, this ain't all that. And then one day, I just pulled it out, just to pull it out and put it on, tried it. And I was like, why the hell did I ever stop using this? This is amazing. It has become my all-time favorite mascara of life. Next to, next to my two, my two face, my benefit Air Real mascara. This is my like. This is. This is the holy, holy grail. And then, then this one comes like right here. And I love these two on top of each other. This one separates and lengthens things like nobody's business. And then this one gives you value and length. And it's like these two together is like over here. Here I have three of my favorite drugstore uh, mascaras of 2017. Now, this set is not saying that these are the only ones that I like. There are so many amazing drugstore mascaras out there it's just hard to choose your favorites the drugstore has so many options but 
I narrowed it down. I brought it back because let me just show y'all something right there. This right here is all my mascaras. These are all the mascaras I own. So when I say this was a very hard, hard decision to narrow it down to just five, it was hard, okay? And the first one is the L'Oreal Telescopic Mascara. This has been out for a very long time, and I've heard so many people rave about this mascara. I don't know why it took me so long to try it, but I am so glad that I did, finally, because this mascara is life, bro. When you want lashes, the only thing I hate about this mascara is this. This this super bendy brush is so annoying because you can't you can't get it. You can't get it to go. Finally, back into the bottle. I hate that. If I had this is my only pet peeve. But I'm willing to deal with that because the mascara is so freaking good. It's my other option is the CoverGirl Plumpify Glass Pro Foundation Mascara. I love this mascara. It reminds me a lot of the Benefit They're Real. I think this mascara is amazing. Folks. And then last but not least is my L'Oreal. Oh, I'm saying it like it's mine. L'Oreal Voluminous Superstar Mascara. This one. My favorite part of this mascara is the primer side. I use this with any mascara. I absolutely love the primer side of this mascara. I heard they have a fiber version of this that I really want to try. Um, I heard good things about it. But yeah, those are my top five. One. Uh, mascaras of 2017 now because I'm gonna do this part off camera I'm gonna go ahead and show you my top five lashes of 2017 and I got them sit right over here Ta -da! and they are all drugstore with the exception of one of them I'm gonna talk about this one first because it's the only non drugstore pair of lashes that I have in this uh, top five and these are the ones by pure we got these if you're subscribed to boxy tribe i'm not sure if all of you guys are but i know i am a few you have to be um we these were in uh, i want to say august or maybe october's boxy charm box i want to say it was august august or july boxy charm box and um these lashes are very very beautiful i love the fact that they're very wispy and Fluttery, and I love the length. It, it kind of like flares out. I absolutely love these lashes. Okay, now let's talk about the drugstore options. Um, I believe I've talked about these lashes. Excuse me, I got stuff flying all over the place. I believe I've talked about these lashes um, before on my channel. These are the Kiss Blooming Lash. These are my favorite lashes by Kiss. I love the, the Blooming Lash collection. I love how fluttery and just wispy and airy these lashes look. They look so good on the eyes. And the particular style that I am obsessed with is the Camellias. These are the lashes that I wore on my wedding day. And these are the lashes that got me into wearing lashes more often. Next, I have my all-time favorite if I was to wear makeup and lashes every single day lash this will be the lash that I will gravitate towards every day this is the lash that I wear in almost every makeup tutorial where I was wearing lashes these were the these were the lashes I was wearing even if I wasn't wearing a make doing a makeup tutorial if I went out somewhere and I wanted to rock lashes that day these were the lashes that I put on these are the Ardell glam lashes these are in the um, style 122s I love them because they're natural looking they're super black they are wispy and they have just the right amount of length. They're almost the same length as my real lashes which makes them more natural looking and the reason why I love them so much. They just give my lashes a little bit more mm. Love it, love it, love it and I have droves of these. Every time I go to the drugstore I pick up a pair of 122s or the next lash I'm about to show you, the 172. These are my awesome, uh, these are my new recent discoveries. I discovered these sometime in August of last year and I am a fan of the Ardell natural lashes in the style 172. I love these because they are a little bit shorter than my natural lash and if I don't want to really just take on the mascara but I want to have that I got lashes look, these 
are the lashes. And I love the fact that they have the invisible band. My favorite lash style is the ones with the invisible bands because they're easier to work with. They look the most natural on the eyes. I love this style because it just blends right in with my lashes. And no one really knows that I'm wearing lashes because it looks like my own lashes. And my last lash that I'm going to talk about is the Ardell Faux Mink Lash. I am in love with their Faux Mink Lash um, collection. This these by far though are my favorite. They look worn because I have worn them plenty of times. Um, these are hands down my, oh gosh, I love these. I love these. I love these when I'm looking for a more dramatic look. When I want some, a little bit more, you know. They're still natural looking, but still dramatic. They're like naturally dramatic, dramatically natural. That makes sense. They have best, the best of both worlds. And again, is it my favorite style where they're short at the end and then go along towards the middle love these lashes now I'm gonna go ahead and put on some lashes off camera and mascara and I'll come back with the rest of the thing I have my mascara on but not my lashes I'm actually waiting for the glue to grab to dry to dry Lola I'm waiting for the glue to dry I'm actually putting on the Ardell glam 122s I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about my next step which is the concealer my top five concealers of 2017. Some of these are oldies, some of these are new to me. But um, yeah, let's get right into it. I'm gonna start with the three drugstore ma uh, mascaras concealers that I have, and the first one is the NYX HD concealer. A lot of the name has rubbed off, but it looks like this. I actually really like this concealer, and I need to get a lighter shade because this shade is almost my skin tone color so I always have to mix it with something a little bit lighter but I really do like this NYX HD concealer. I love the way it blends out. I love the way it sets up under the eyes. I typically don't get any creasing with this concealer. I really really love it. I typically don't get any creasing with a lot of concealer. Moving on to the next concealer and this one is a staple. This one is a holy grail. This is, the, this is my all-time favorite drugstore concealer and this is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. It is one of my all-time favorite. It is my all-time favorite drugstore concealer. Now, my last drugstore concealer, this is the Superstay Better Than Better Skin Mascara. Mascara? What the heck? This is the Superstay Better Skin Con Corrector Concealer from Maybelline. This is my jam, y'all. I mean, it's a it's a it's a really good runner-up for the Maybelline Fit Me. I really do love this concealer a lot. I love the coverage. I love the consistency. I love the way it blends out. I love the fact that it doesn't settle into my fine lines and all that jazz. I don't like cakey concealers. I don't like thick concealers. Um, I'm not a full coverage concealer type of cakey concealer type of person. Just get, I don't have a, I don't have dark circles. I don't have a lot of bags to try to cover up. So I prefer something that looks natural on my skin. Now, moving on to my high-end mascaras, and I have two of them. One of them is my all-time favorite, my all-time favorite high-end concealer, and that is the Too Faced Born This Way um, Naturally Radiant Concealer. I have the color Dark. I don't know if I told you what colors I had in the uh, drugstore one so I'll just tell you right fast in the Maybelline fit me I have the color 30 cafe in the better skin superstay I have the color 60 deep and back to the high end said I like concealers that look naturally good on the skin it doesn't look like I, I have cake under there like I just took the frosting and said Mwah, you know what I'm saying it is natural it looks good it has just the right amount of coverage for my liking. It's the right consistency. It settles on my skin really nice. It blends out really nice. Ours, uh, radiant creamy concealer, and I have the color Amande. Amon. How do you say that? I have that color. Um, and again, it's another concealer where I need to get one shade lighter because this is pretty much my skin tone and that's pretty much how it is with most of my concealers i am just so afraid that i'm going to get something that's just too light for me it's just going to be horrible okay um i think i also need to get a shade lighter in this one as well but what is the case it's better safe than sorry um these i i love the way this blends out i love the way it looks under the skin i under the skin on top of the skin i love the fact that it it gives me the right amount of coverage without looking too cakey it doesn't settle into fine lines 
doesn't crease on me. I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So yeah, there you have it. My top five favorite concealers of 2017. All right, let's, let's put these lashes on because I'm pretty sure my glue is overly dry now. Now that our concealer is on, I'm going to move on to contours, um, contour powders, and contour products. Um, the reason why I'm moving on to contour products at this point in the video is because one of those contour products I really, really want, that would be the e.l.f. Um, I don't know if this is a, the concealer stick. So this is the e.l.f. Lightweight Concealer Stick, and this is in the color Deep. It is the only cream product in my top five products. Um, and it's in my contour uh, products list because I use it to contour with because it's way too dark. It's out of my skin tone. But since I'm in this category, I'm going to go ahead and talk about my top five or top five contour products um, with the e.l.f. Uh, lightweight concealer stick being one of them. When I tried this product, oh my god, it changed my whole mind about cream contouring. It changed how I see cream contouring this really makes a difference and not just this particular product but cream contouring in general really makes a difference I love this it's quick it's easy it blends out beautifully it's amazing I love this product let's go on to my powder contours though and I have three of them so I didn't have five contour products that are um, in this list. I only had four, so I'm going to talk about the other three. And these are all affordable drugstore options that you can pick up at, at your local drugstore with it. I love this contour palette, and I got this palette because I saw Cherise love um, using it a while ago. And it really looked good on her, so I was like, you know what, let me cop that, because this is a more warm tone palette compared to the NYX contour palette. So this is what these contour palette looks like. It has more warm shades compared to the NYX one, which is about which is what I'm about to show you now. And this is the NYX contour palette. This is my holy grail contour palette. I have used this in so many videos. It's ridiculous. This is the NYX highlight and contour pro palette. Uh, and it looks like this. The colors in this palette are more on the cool cool tone side. So you have your options. You can either go for a cool tone palette or a warm tone palette. I love them both. And then my last favorite product of 2017 for contouring would be the e.l.f. Finishing Powder in the color Deep. This color is absolutely gorgeous. It goes on smooth. It blends out beautifully. It looks really good on the skin. It looks really natural and just uh, this is oh, this is this is bae right here this, anyways that completes my top five contour products i'm gonna go ahead and finish my contouring and highlighting situation with the stick from elf oh. Okay, 
so before we go in and set our contour and, and our face and everything I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my favorite setting powders of 2017 I'm gonna say 2015 of 2017 my favorite setting powders and I use these setting powders for one purpose only and that is to set all of my areas of my face that I highlighted so up under my eyes my center of my forehead, bridge of my nose, tip of bow, and chin. And my top five, I think I have five, I have five. My top five uh, setting powers goes as follows. Okay, the Studio Makeup um, Setting Powder. This is their HD Finishing Powder. It says it's a silky setting powder with a light shimmering to help, with a light shimmer to help blur the appearance of imperfection and pores. I really like this product. I didn't know it had shimmer in it though. I mean, if there's shimmer in it, you really can't tell. It literally looks just like finely milled flour. That's what it looks like. It's absolutely a beautiful setting powder to have up on the eyes. I really like um, it. My second uh, recent fave is the, well, um, Bare Minerals Invisible Light. Um, setting powder duo. This is the matte and this is the glow. Um, I love them both actually and I didn't really think that this would look good on my skin tone but it really does. It gives you this lit from within look. This candle lit look. I just absolutely love it and I was not sure about this powder until one day I was like let me just give it a try. I love this under the eyes guys. It is absolutely gorgeous. My favorite 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 high-end setting powder now I'm not sure how much this is I need to find out for you guys but I'm pretty sure this is not a drugstore price um, I don't think this is a drugstore product the studio makeup one we all know that bare minerals is not drugstore this cost is a penny okay my third favorite high-end product my favorite my holy grail high-end setting powder and this is the Too Faced born this way Earth Real Setting Powder. I love this stuff. This stuff, this stuff, guys, is amazing. I love everything about it. I love the way it sits up under the eyes. I love the way it sits on the skin. I love the color. It's like a yellowy cream color. It is absolutely beautiful, and I love the the packaging as well. CoverGirl, the CoverGirl one. And this one is the Professional Loose Powder, and I have the color 115 Translucent Medium. It is not yellow, but it's more of a tan color. This has been like my favorite, so it's like a tan, light brown, creamy color. I love this setting powder. This is the one that I've been gravitating more towards lately. It is my, ugh, ugh, I love it. Do not sleep on drugstore people because y'all be missing out on 